my Dean Degas Ramirez and my task on this episode of Cultural Cash Online is to introduce or reintroduce to you, for those already familiar with the piece, a fairly early work of my grandfather, the national artist for visual art Cesar Legazpi. The work as it appears on CCP's object list is left untitled. But in my family's collective mindset and also in the one major publication on Cesar Legazpi, Alfredo Rosas' The Making of a National Artist, the work is called Triptych. It is physically being made up of three panels, separate oil paintings on wood hung contiguously as a singular work. Triptych is dated 1969, the year which saw the official opening of the CCP. Triptych, as you can see, is one of Legazpi's more monochromatic paintings. Despite the employing of a bright yellow palette, it is arguably among pieces in the CCP collection that might be said to easily blend into the woodwork. As the eldest grandchild who lived with my grandparents till I was about four, I literally grew up as this and other paintings were coming into being. Basically, set free to tinker around Lolo's studio, there was this one time when I spotted a bunch of finely wrought pencil drawings shockingly abandoned in a trash bin next to his palette. Having tried to draw even as a thought, I knew instinctively this chunking was a travesty and launched into a recovery mission. My mother, thinking that I was too young to tend to such an art throw, took these drawings away for safekeeping. Decades later, as a working adult with still modest means, my first grand splurge went to framing these sketches which in their full and final color renditions appeared in the controversial series Filipino Heritage, The Making of a Nation. The manuscript that Alfredo Rosas had to sneak out to Australia to publish. This may have been one of my earliest recollections about more actively taking part in saving creative artifacts, a prelude to my work in art history. And looking at how Lolo worked through his image making from drawing, bocchetti, what eventually became scaled-up oil paintings, just as triptych became. Lola Cesar, in many ways, could be seen as de cajon in his painting method. Certain things needed to be in place for work to ensue. He would always paint in a sonically immersive environment, the loud classical music wafting through his studio, seeming to encase him in his own world, at least during these hours, after breakfast, siesta, and dinner, during which he was left to himself. He kept at his easel daily, like clockwork, up through the time that cancer got the better of him. It was easy to imagine how music and image making fed off each other in that set of space he carved out for himself. Interview transcripts from Ross's working on his book on Legazpi recall how Lolo was specifically asked to do work for the site we still find Triptych hanging in today. The space was chosen for him. For those of you who have not yet had a look, Triptych hangs right at the foyer or outer bounds of the little theater also called LT Lobby. So Legaspi knew precisely about the spatial context of the work, and we can fairly surmise that this played into what the painting would become, a visual anchor in a space that serves as both receiving room and intermezzo area for those coming to the CCP for a play, dance, or film. Triptych thus exerts a presence within a space for preparation, sensitizing oneself to encounter rhythm and movement in sites of flux just as it also oversees a space for taking pauses between intermissions and between succeeding performances and screenings. The late eminent art historian Alice Guillermo writes that Legazpi's work alongside those of his neo-modernist peers such as Hernando Ocampo demonstrated the more harmonious aspect of Cubism, its synthetic space. Contra to the thinking that insists Cubism was wholly about the breaking down of figures and violent juxtaposition of elements. This Cubist phase of Legazpi to which we associate this piece suggests Filipino painters interested in employing Cubist language were also keen to respond to received ideas creating rules to paint by, which they themselves felt comfortable with in their own culture of sensing. In Triptych, I would argue that this is seen in how still recognizably human figures are built up through a gradation of tone and yet still not so distinctively as to bracket these figures off completely from the also tonally nuanced ground. The figures recede and surface in the mind's eye because of this recourse to rendering in near monochrome. 
one could say that this alludes to the way music both foregrounds and retreats amidst performance, leaving room for quiet and summoning volume for contrast and emphasis. Triptych is demonstrative of how line, color, figure, and ground are played off to evoke shifts in rhythm and simulated progression. A viewer's intuitive tracing of lines laid out across spaces sets off a panning of vision and staccato and sustain wrought by the laying down of variant yellowish shades and tones both arrest and liberate the pace and intensity in which beholders scan left to right or right to left of the panels. There is no one overpowering focal point in this respect. I would add the musical reference embedded in Triptych is not at all accidental given the spatial context of the work and the way in which Legaspi himself counted on music to propel this painting. That is, it was very much shaped by classical soundscapes piercing every corner of his studio and imaginably how this infused his thought and creative process. By 1969, when Triptych was unveiled, Legaspi had only just decided to take the plunge and go full steam as an artist, leaving his advertising job and gambling on the survival of his still young family on the strength of reception of his studio practice. It would take at least another decade before he could rest easy in that regard. We might think of this as added contextual layer in the making of Triptych, of how art provides respite from the dull drums of mechanical labor, but also pushes the would-be artist to set off in possibly uncomfortable or unpredictable directions. It's good to remember that Triptych essentially comes from the same period as pre-martial law work like Street Incident and other such potent images that Gatsby made that often remain as sketches, unrealized as larger easel work amidst the precarious landscape facing Filipinos, not just artists, in the dark decades that were to come. I'd like to leave you now to listen to a musical piece which my co-curator, also artistic director, Clara Ramirez Comisha, is part of the Cesar Legaspi Bird Centennial exhibition called Lying in State, done at the CCP in 2017. The piece called Prelude to C Minor is national artist for music, Ryan Kebyev's response to our prompt to engage in our revisiting of triptych as it was rehung more dynamically within a specially designed alcove in the CCP main gallery. this sonically satisfying response in no small way evokes for us how artistic spirits can be pleasurably generative across time, space, and generations. This is our ode to further deepen conversations, not only between national artists speaking to each other, but also amongst invariably contentious voices, still sounding off desperately in our charge, Sandscapes of the Day. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Cultural Cash Online.